risen Christ. We have celebrated Easter in new and creative ways, and yet we find ourselves still behind closed doors. We may not know where to go from here or how to venture out to rejoin our beloved. What will the world look like when our doors finally swing wide? Today, we, like the disciples, still sit in locked rooms waiting. Jesus appeared to them and said, Peace be with you. And the disciples rejoiced. Where and how will we find the risen Christ as we wait for our doors to reopen? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us worship together as we remember this promise. The Gospel according to John. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. 
Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The Word of God for the people of God. Just like us, right after Easter, the disciples were together in one place, and it was a time of fear. They were kind of scared about some stuff. Maybe you're feeling like that too. It's okay. Jesus comes and speaks peace in moments of our fear. And one of the things that was neat about them being in one place is they not only got to discover the cool things about each other, but maybe even the parts where they didn't agree or there was this guy named Thomas, and we call him Doubting Thomas because of what happens in some of the days right after Easter. But the cool thing about this is, that's what it means to be the church, to be a follower of Jesus, is that we welcome and embrace not just the good parts that we can bribe each other with candy with, but the real parts of who we are. So I'm curious, what have you been discovering about members of your family in this time? I'm sure lots of good things, but even in the things that maybe they're grumpy when they're tired, love them for those things too. That's what it means to be the church in this time. Let's rise up together with our good and with our bad.
Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out, or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forever. you were going to be here yet. Just uh, come on in. I just have one thing I need to do. So hold on. They chop me down and I looked up high. I am the life that'll never, never die. I'll live in you if you live in me. For I am the Lord of the dance that he dance and wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance city. Okay, that be oh, okay, well, glad you're here. Welcome to the bishop's residence. Why don't we go into the living room and talk? They were afraid. They shut their doors. They tried to keep safe. It's a story as true as today, but it is actually about the disciples. After the resurrection, they were frightened by the news that Jesus' tomb was empty. Frightened by the crowds they saw turn on him for the way they might be treated. So they hid, tucked themselves away, tried to lay low. And yet, they were found. Jesus came through their locked door and proved that he had risen from the grave. He gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit and offered them the freedom found in the forgiveness of sin. He offered them their own experience of resurrection, freed from the weight of guilt and resentment. But Thomas, Thomas, who wasn't there had at the time, had trouble seeing the truth of the resurrection. His eyes were closed to the change in his companions, how, how the experience of the risen Christ had impacted them. He couldn't open himself up to the reality of that power for himself. We, too, are, are tucked away behind closed doors. Easter just wasn't the same this year. There were no Easter egg hunts, no Easter cantatas, no shared hot cross buns, no churches filled with Easter lilies. We've all been sheltering in place, trying to keep ourselves and others safe from COVID-19. But there is something I know to be true. Easter still happened and it continues to happen now the risen christ still comes to us to show us the truth of the resurrection and to offer resurrection power to us i have seen lives turned around by resurrection power and i'm sure you have too every time someone puts down the bottle and enters into recovery there's a resurrection going on every time a, a burned out forest show signs of new life. There's a resurrection going on. Every time a, a broken heart begins to heal, there's resurrection going on. Resurrection is going on right now, even in these days we're living. Have you seen evidence of it? I see family members deepening their relationships with each other. I see the earth being healed as our impact on it is lessened because we're sheltering in place. 
I see people making inward spiritual journeys and confronting the lies they've carried about themselves and being freed to be their full God-beloved selves, learning new skills, working on old ones, and discovering that the most meaningful celebrations are the simplest. I hear people saying, I'm not gonna live like I did before this. I'm learning the things that really matter. I realize my relationships are what's important. I'm gonna deepen those relationships. I'm gonna love more. I'm gonna serve more. I'm going to be a better human being to all those I touch. My siblings, this is what resurrection power is all about. We are never, ever the same again. Even as we hide away in our homes, Christ comes to us, breathes on us the life-giving spirit and invites our spirits to rise with his. We don't know when this shelter in place will end, when we can leave our homes and embrace one another again, but this I know. Our lives will never be the same. And it's because the risen Christ has visited us. We are a new people. And as we step back into the world, we will rise up as never before. God bless you, my friends. God bless you. Greetings. I'm Reverend Paul Kotke. I'm the District Superintendent of the Mile High Metro District. I would invite you as we enter into this Easter tide season that you would consider ways that you could give of life. Um, a kind word to those that are on the front line, uh, carrying on daily tasks that we might uh, continue to live our lives. Uh, the grocery store workers, the essential uh, employees, the medical staff, all critical in this system. We'd also invite you to consider a gift of food for those that are on the margins and running out of their supplies. A gift of prayer as we are in essence a people of prayer that we might enter into this day with a deeper understanding of God's grace uh, that invites us into living our lives fully. I would also invite you to consider a gift, a financial a gift, uh, to your church. Uh, Lord knows our churches have uh, wrestled hard with making these adjustments, and they could use your further support. I would invite you to consider giving a gift to the Mount Sky Conference as we seek ways of being present uh, in living into this day and into the future through God's grace. Let it be so. Thank you. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Greetings, Church. I'm Jeff Rainwater, Wyoming District Superintendent. When I was young, living in Arkansas, it was easy to celebrate Easter. The air was warm, the grass green, trees and bushes flowering. New life was everywhere. Celebrating Easter was easily more about sight than about faith. Ah, but when we moved out west, Celebrating Easter was altogether different. Sunrise services and sub-freezing temperatures, snow on the ground, and not a single broad green leaf to be found. It took faith to celebrate Easter in the dark and frost and snow. More like that first Easter, I suppose, when the images of a broken body hung on a cross still haunted the dark dreams of defeated disciples. This Easter season, now seven days in, as, as we remain behind closed doors, separated from one another, is another one of those celebrations where faith must inform sight. But as John's gospel reminds us, it is in the dark that Easter began. When there is still scent of death upon the wind and darkness hides, all but fear and despair, and hope is but a memory. That is the beginning. When root of green grass yields to cold grounds will no more, when life trapped in chrysalis first dreams of flight, before first bloom is ever seen, that is the beginning. When night has become a snare and all you believed good and right and true has failed, light the candle 
Set the watch. Stay awake. God's not done yet. This is just the beginning. In preparation for today, we ask for photos of resurrection, new life among us. And so I invite you to hear the music now. See your testimony of images and know that this is the beginning. The Lord is risen. And he has promised, we too will rise. You're broken down and tired Of living life on the merry-go-round And you can't find a fighter But I see it in you, so we can walk it out We gon' walk it out and move on days. And I rise up, I rise like the day. I rise up, I rise unafraid. I rise up and I do it a thousand eight times again. And I rise Silence is in quiet And it feels like it's getting hard to breathe And I know you feel like dying But I promise we would take the world to its feet Move I won't take Bring it to its feet That we have each other
in cocoons a hidden promise butterflies will soon be free in the cold and snow of winter there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until it's season something god alone can see there's a song in every silence seeking words In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity, in our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity, in our death the resurrection, at the last a victory, unrevealed until it's season, something God alone can see. So, friends, remember, you are the body of Christ. You have risen with him. And in your life, you have his life and grace and power. And so go into God's world and be all that God longs for you to be. Amen. Tell me, I wanna know Tell me, who are you serving?